I want to welcome you to week five of a study in Galatians. You know, we've been doing this in Him Scripture study since June the 21st of 2021. And and I want to uh, invite you to go back on this podcast and, and get this whole study. You know, this, this, this podcast has been going since March of 2018. And uh, we been we were we were invited to come into the local jail here uh, a little bit after we started this podcast, and it's turned into a full time ministry to reach out to the inmates, to the to the people that are struggling with addiction. I mean, the homeless here. I, I minister to to a lot of homeless people in the jails because they get put in jail. And it, it's turned into a ministry in itself. And and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask you to do this. Pray for us. Pray that the Lord op- continues to open doors for us to do, to do what we're doing because this podcast is going all over the planet. And and we're ministering in rehab places. I got to minister in one here, here up in Kentucky the other day. They're they they're saying they're going to use our podcast to help the men that are that are there. We've we've offered it to a lot of people. They the when when the a lot of times when when the people are coming through rehab, they don't they don't have access to a phone. But when they when they get acclimated and and get to go get on the right track, they'll let them have a phone, and that's when they start getting this podcast and these tablets that go into the prisons. I mean, it's it, it's just branched out. We have done so much in just a very short few months since we started doing this, and it thrills me to to be able to tell you. That, that God's opening big doors and he's going to continue to open them. So pray for us. Pray, lift me up. Pray, lift this family up because we are reaching out to the world through this podcast, through the tablets that go into the prisons, through the rehabs that we've been invited into and, and to minister. And we want to continue to do what we're doing. Now, like I said, go back to June the 21st of 2021 and get this whole study. Go through this card with us. If you, if you don't have one of these in him scripture cards, get one of them. Here, call me, text me, or, well, you can't call or text, I'm sorry. Email me, contact me on Facebook. Any way you can get in touch with us, send us a message, and we will send you one of these cards free of charge. It won't cost you anything. What we do on this podcast is is make sure that people get what they need to grow strong in the Lord, in Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Not in our good works, not in what we what we're doing, but we want to give you what will make you strong in Him, to to teach you who you are in Christ Jesus, so that you can teach somebody else. I said this other night at, at a church during one of our filmings that goes into the podcast or into the prisons on these tablets, and we were filming a video. I told him, I said, I don't care to get neck deep in the mud and the mire and the stink of this world. But I said, when I get it, get, when I get you by the hand, I'm going to make sure that I'm turned around, going back, taking you back to where I come from. And that is victory in Jesus Christ. I want to help as many people as I can find out who they are in Christ Jesus. That takes me into a lot of dirty places sometimes. But I'm going to tell you something. When I get there, I'm going to shine the light of Jesus Christ out into this world, out into this dark world, so others can be set free. I count it a privilege today to bring you Paul's prayers for the Ephesians. You know, these prayers, I've adopted these prayers for the world we live in. I want this world to come to realize and understand just how much God loves them, just how much He cares for them, and wants them to know it. That's the reason I go through these prayers every time I do one of these weekday podcasts, because I want the world to realize just what Paul wanted the Ephesians to realize, that God's for you. 
that, that he loves you and cares for you more than you'll ever realize. Ephesians 1.15 says, Ever since I first heard of your strong faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for God's people everywhere, I have not stopped thanking God for you. I pray for you constantly, asking God, the glorious Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, to give you spiritual wisdom and insight so that you might grow in your knowledge of God. I pray that your hearts will be flooded with light so that you can understand the confident hope he has given to those he called, his holy people, who are his rich and glorious inheritance. I also pray that you will understand the incredible greatness of God's power for us who believe him. This is the same mighty power that raised Christ from the dead and seated him in the place of honor at God's right hand in the heavenly realms. Now he is far above any ruler or authority or power or leader or anything else, not only in this world, but also in the world to come. God has put all things under the authority of Christ and has made him head over all things for the benefit of the church. And the church is his body. It is made full and complete by Christ who fills all things everywhere with himself. Ephesians 3, 14 says, When I think of all this, I fall to my knees and pray to the Father, the creator of everything, in heaven and on earth. I pray that from His glorious unlimited resources, He will empower you with inner strength through His Spirit. Then Christ will make His home in your hearts as you trust in Him. Your roots will grow down into God's love and keep you strong. And may you have the power to understand, as all God's people should, how wide, how long, how high, and how deep His love is. May you experience the love of Christ Though it is too great to understand fully, then you will be made complete with all the fullness of life and power that comes from God. Now all glory to God who is able, through his mighty power at work within us, to accomplish infinitely more than you might ask more than we might ask or think. Glory to him in the church and in Christ Jesus through all generations, forever and ever. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. I thank God that that he shows me that love, that mercy, that grace, and that goodness for I'm, I'll talk about every day of my life, and he does it through his word. Every day through his word, I, I come to realize more and more just how much he cares, just how much he loves me, just how much he loves this world and the people that live here. Glory to God. Let's see what God's word has to say today. Father, I thank you and I praise you, God, for your word. Guide me. Use me for your honor and your glory. Help me be the light and the vessel, Lord, that you can shine through, that you can speak through today. And we'll forever give you all the praise and glory for it all. In Jesus' holy name I pray. Amen. We're uh, we're in Galatians 2.14 today. And this is a... This book has turned out to be a, a real eye-opener to, to, to not only me, but I'd say for a lot of people that, are, that are, are listening to this podcast because this has turned into something that, that I, I didn't realize was so prominent in, in the, the churches that Paul was ministering to. Now, it's what we're talking about is... Uh, people that are, are born again that kind of tend to get steered back to the law keeping and to thinking they have to uh, live by that law to to be right and it's Paul was Paul was adamant you know God turned him around turned him around he said he said you know I'm a, I'm a Hebrew of Hebrews a Pharisee and he was he was a a law keeper but when he realized what Jesus done and what he had given him he made it his life's mission God called him to do this to go out into all the world and preach the gospel the 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 new beginning of Jesus Christ and 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 not not to do away with the law but to let people know that they shouldn't be bound by the the, the way they felt because they couldn't measure up to that law 
And uh, Jesus told us from the beginning, uh, well, I'm sorry, Paul told us in Romans, you know, owe no man anything but to love one another, for he that loves another has fulfilled the law. And in this verse, you know, Peter was, well, just let me read it. It's uh, Galatians 2.14 in the King James Version. It says, but when I saw that they walked not uprightly according to the truth of the gospel, I said unto Peter, Peter, before them all, if thou being a Jew livest after the manner of the Gentiles and not as do the Jews, why compellest thou the Gentiles to live as do the Jews? In other words, he said, look, you're a Jewish person and you have been freed from the law and you know it. Why would you be trying to... Uh, force these Galatians to get back into the law and live by the law through circumcision, you know, through the through the acts. But let me read this in, in the New Living Translation. This is uh, Galatians 2.14 in the New Living Translation. It says, When I saw they were not following the truth of the gospel message, I said to pre and I said to Peter in front of them all I said he said since you a Jew by birth have discarded the Jewish laws and are living like a gentile why are you now trying to make these gentiles follow the Jewish traditions see Peter had kind of reverted back to uh Judaism and the acts of Judaism, you know, living li the dietary things and, and all this other stuff. And, and l let me clarify something. I'm not trying to push people away from living in uh, the goodness of what God set forth in, in the New Te or the Old Testament for people to live in. If you're a, if you're a, if you strive to to keep the law, that's great. I mean, goodness, you know, morals and ethics are a big part of a Christian life. But I find I found it out in my lifetime, and I see it more today than ever. Is when people start trying to do that it starts becoming them working into uh, being right with God when Christ made them right with God 2,000 years ago. And all they had to do was accept him by faith. But Peter was, you know, trying to twist these people's arms, in, in other words, and make them live uh, under the Jewish tradition, under the law. Let me read it in the... Uh, in the uh, Amplified Classic. Galatians 2.14, the Amplified Classic version says, But as soon as I saw that they were not straightforward and were not living up to the truth of the gospel, I said to Cephas, Peter, before everybody present, if you, uh, though born a Jew, can live as you have been living, like a Gentile and not like a Jew, how do you dare to urge and practically force the Gentiles to comply with the ritual of Judaism and, and live like Jews? Peter had somehow got back. I mean, Peter's, Peter's born again. He, Peter's a, a, a disciple, walked with Jesus and saw all the things that he had, he had done. And, and, and yes, Peter's, Peter's role was to minister to the Jews. Well, he was the apostle to the Jews. Paul, being a, being a Pharisee, was called to minister to the Gentile world. But somehow Peter had reverted back, and that's the sad part about uh, getting in uh, the law-keeping. It tends to pull you back to where it is instead of living in Christ Jesus See this is this when I when I when I first started getting a hold of what it was like to be free I had some ladies that that come up here and and good people Christian people 
born again Christian people, but they were they were going through the uh, the rituals, and I can't remember what it was, what time of year it was, but it was some kind of uh, Jewish ritual. Uh, that's Old Testament, you know. They were going through a festival. I can't remember what it was, but anyway. I was taking them some wood up there. They were camping on our place. They stayed here eight or nine days. And uh, uh, just good people, nice people. But they looked at me, and, and I got to tell them what we done and, and what we are doing on the podcast and this and that. And, he's, and they said, where did you find your freedom? And without, a, without hesitation, I knew where I found it. My freedom came through Jesus Christ, my Lord and Savior, and finding out who I was in Him, not who I was in my good deeds, because my good deeds had had uh, uh, fell short so many times that He had pushed me away, pushed me away from God instead of the grace of God, me realizing that when I did make a mistake, I could run to Him instead of being scared of Him. And it, it, it it's amazing how that that law keeping and the things that Peter was trying to invoke on the Galatians and and when he wasn't doing it himself, he was being very hypocritical about it because uh, Acts the tenth chapter, you know, we talked about that the other day. Cornelius, you know, before Cornelius came to him, uh, you know, God gave him a vision. And Paul or Peter realized that God was no respecter of person, and he God wanted him to minister to 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 this man that was coming to him, and he did. And he said he said it. He said, "I perceive that God is no respecter of person," and and Peter began to understand what he was doing wrong by trying to you know look at everything like like uh, from a Jewish standpoint. Or from a law keeper standpoint, because the law will always look down on people. It'll always uh, look at their shortcomings instead of looking at what God has done in their life. See, God, Jesus Christ, done a a miracle. He he performed a miracle in your life if you're born again. But you get into law keeping, you get into just going by the commandments, and when you mess up, you feel like that you've just failed miserably, and it, it'll push you to run from God. I know. I done it. I, I was stuck in a legalistic place and, and, and around legalistic people, and all it was was, you know, sorrow and, and, and just it, it was a mess, and it pushed me away from God. It pushed me away from church that's a sad sad part about it it pushed me completely out out of the church because i allowed my shortcomings to hinder me instead of confessing my sins and and because god was faithful and just to forgive me of my sins and cleanse me from all unrighteousness i just threw up my hands and quit and said i couldn't do it anymore and that's what Paul was trying to stop Peter from from doing to these Galatians, and that was putting them back in the law into legalism, so that they didn't get discouraged and run. So today, I want to ask you a question: Is is your Christian life uh, hinged on your you being good enough? Because if it is, you'll never measure up. You'll always feel defeated. And and I've got a question for you today. Are you trying, to, if you're not born again, are you trying to work your way into being good enough to come to God? I, I'm going to tell you this. This is, this is it in a nutshell. That if we, call, if we shall confess with our mouth, anyone comes to Christ and, and invites him into our hearts. Romans 10 and 9 said, If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and thou shalt believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, it says you shall be saved. It don't say you might be if you're good enough. It don't say if you might you might be if you cross all your T's and dot all your I's just right. It don't say you might be if you're, if you're perfect. It says that whosoever shall say, let me just go back and read it. 
that it says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and thou shalt believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, it says you shall be saved. It says where with the heart man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. If you are doing your dead level best to to live up to uh, the law, don't do it ever again. Stop it. Start living and abiding in Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior. And if you're not born again, accept him today as your Savior. Make him Lord today. Confess him as Lord. And then find out what these, what these verses are saying. Find out what, what Paul is doing to lift us up and show us that it's by grace are we saved. Through faith in God. Glory to God. Make Jesus Christ Lord of your life today and watch him change your life forever. Glory to God. Hey, listen, go to our website. Get in touch with us. If you got a prayer request, send it to me. I want to hear from you. I want to hear from you. Now, this this message won't go out for months from the time of this this, uh, uh, recording, but... uh, I, I want to say that I got a message yesterday from a company that has 700,000 tablets. We've been talking about this, but they confirmed that that our podcast was going to go on it in the fall. By the time this this uh, this uh, recording is going to go out. So I just praise God for another open door. 700,000 tablets. That means that if, if uh, uh, one tablet's in a two-man cell, we can reach 1.4 million people with 700,000 tablets in prisons and jails all over this nation. It thrills me for what God, the doors that are God, is opening up for us to do that. Now, if you're a partner of this ministry, partners, thank you. I pray Mark 10, 29, and 30 over you today. A hundredfold return on everything that you sow into this ministry. But if you're not a partner, I pray that you that you ask God what you should do about this ministry and, and how you can sow into his kingdom through this ministry, reaching thousands of people, really reaching far over a million people with this new this new uh, venture because we're we're in 919 different prisons right now at this time and and now they're they're going they're talking about 700,000 more tablets and that puts us in so many more facilities. I don't know how many, but it's it's a great deal. So so pray about becoming a partner with us. Pray about what God would have you to do to sow into his kingdom today. Go to our website. Get in touch with us. It's the-prodigalson.com.